2 Chronicles 14. So Abijah slept with his father, and they buried him in the city of David, which is Zion, Jerusalem. And Asa his son reigned in his stead, another king. In his days the land was quiet ten years. Peace, like Solomon's day. And Asa did that which was good and right in the eyes of the Lord his God. Now, you don't see that with, with Israel North. But Judah, you will get some good kings. And notice, his God. It's not just God. God is Asa's God. He did that which right. For he took away the altars of the strange gods. Gods that are not known in Israel to be known in Israel. You know what he did? He took them away. He didn't put them in a the box and put them in the attic. He didn't... Okay, just put, just hide it over here, or decorate it so it don't look like what it really is. He took it away. It's out of here. Bye. See ya. And the high places, that's where people go up. I mean, like the Tower of Babel. The higher we get, the closer to God we get. That's why these mountains are always people trying to climb when they go. To them. They're just trying to get to an upper guru. But the Tower of Babel that was in, in Genesis, remember it said, let us make a name, let us build a tower that we can reach the heavens, not God. They're going high, but they're not reaching God. They're reaching gods in whatever they can find. And break down the images. Is that an image of a god? Yep, break it in pieces. Don't give it a new name. Don't adopt it for a religion. Break it. Break down the images. Break down, I mean, standing images. And cut down the groves. Make sure that grove over there, you can't use it. And then they have chainsaws, wherever they use, axes, picks and all. You tear it down, you break it down, it's no more. And probably cut down is where it can't grow back again. And commanded church and state. You get church and state. Here's the king of Judah getting right in the eyes of God, his God. He says, I command the people to seek the Lord God of their fathers. Judah, Jerusalem, God, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. Now these are God's people. This is the nation. But he has commanded the people, and I would assume also if any Gentiles who want to do right in the land. We're going to seek God and nothing but God. That's not a bad church-state system here. Now, if you want to have a church-state system as America had in the congregational church, we're going to make new Zion, new Jerusalem. And we're the people of Israel. We are the Gentiles of the Jewish people chosen by God. And we're going to make our own law. No, that's not what it is. That's a church state system. That's reaching out to a man God, a strange God. But if you were to decide as a nation, we're going to serve the God of the Bible. We're going to serve Jesus Christ. We're going to make it a law. It's Jesus Christ or you can leave. You can choose any nation, any God you want, but this nation we're going to have. That's a revival. That's not going to happen in America. No president is going to stand up and say, by the rights of this nation, of all 50 states, we're going to serve God and Jesus Christ. The media would crucify him and then kill him. They would crucify him with words, and then they would crucify him to kill him. And along with religion. Imagine if, if, a, if a president of this country would stand up and say, your religions are wrong and the Bible's correct. He would have a mass revolution of religions going against him. And he wouldn't dare. No one would dare to take that stand. The churches are falling today. The churches are not even taking a stand for Jesus Christ. You think the government's going to do it? And to do the law and the commandments. Now, that's the difference. That's the Old Testament. That's not us. 
We don't do nothing for salvation. We don't do nothing to please God. It's been pleased by Jesus Christ. It pleased God to bruise him. It pleased God to crucify him. It pleased God the suffering of Jesus Christ for us today. Now, after we're saved, it pleases God that we do what the Bible tells us to do, rightly dividing. Rightly divide, Or you're going to be made ashamed. When you don't rightly divide the word of God, the Bible says you're going to be ashamed. And he took, a, he took away out of all the cities of Judah, the high places. So not just Jerusalem, all Judah. And the images. So you got a problem with images in, in high places. And the kingdom was quiet before him. Now look at that. Look what God did to him. You got right? Yep. Okay, peace. Now, don't you see the prosperity of the gospel there? If I do right with God, God's going to love me. I'm not going to have no viruses. I'm not going to have no money problem. I'm not going to have any troubles. I'm not going to have any tribulations. And if you got problems, you got cancer, your children are not right, if, if, if your car is breaking down, it's because you're not right with God. And what do you do in the New Testament saying all that all they that live godly shall suffer persecution? What do you do with that verse? What do you do when Paul's got all these pearls? He got this pearls of fasting. He's got this pearl of not able to eat. He's got these pearls of uh, Jewish people that are his brethren. He's got the pearls of the Christian. He's got the pearls of the shipwreck. He's got the pearls of being a prisoner. He's being tied or bonded to, next to a uh, uh, guard. Man, I, he didn't wear good clothes, I guarantee. He got what meals was given to him, and he didn't starve to death. Yo, he said one of the things was he did starve. There was times that he didn't fast, but he didn't have he didn't have food. Does that sound like an Asa movement? Does that sound like you know the prosperity we read about in the Old Testament? How wonderful, great things are. No. Rightly divine, that prosperity is Old Testament is the children of Israel. You do right, you get right. New Testament, if you do right, you're going to get an axe. You're going to get people hating you. You're going to get your family against you. You're going to get your co-workers. You're not going to get that promotion. You may not have a good lifestyle as a Christian. But God will take care of you. We today, in the, under, under the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, if I were to die right now, I would be absent from the body and present with the Lord. In the Old Testament, if you died, you were not sure where you would go. Die outside the grace of the Old Testament. And you went to hell. You could have had your whole life wonderful and great. Die out of the grace of God, and you went to hell. Die out of the grace of God today on this side of Calvary. You go to heaven, but you'll lose rewards. It sounds so good if we had a God of prosperity. But that's not today. That's not today. And he built fenced cities in Judah. He's got peace, but look, he's building up his military. That's an instruction of the nation. When God has given you peace, defend yourself. For the land had rest. So there's peace, but we're building ourselves up. And he had no war in those years. Because the Lord had given him rest. I guess we're trying to see that he's doing right. He, he's being right. He's gotten rid of the strange gods. He's gotten rid of the religion. And God has given him peace. I just said, if, if any country in this world today say, we're going to stand up for God, the Bible, and his son, Jesus Christ, he they would be crucified by the United Nations. They would be crucified by the media. They would be crucified by the Muslims. They would be killed and racked by the Catholics. They would be disapproved by the Jehovah Witnesses. Because you would tell those people, get out of my country. And they would be crybaby. They'd be angry. We're offended. We have the rights of all religions. But God has given him peace. Therefore, he said, unto Judah, this is the king. Let us build these cities and make about them walls, towers, gates, and bars. While the land is at while the land is yet before us. So let's do this building, let's get going, let's make these cities, let's fortify ourselves when we're in a peace. 
We're not fighting. Let's build ourselves up. Because we have sought the Lord our God. We, we, you people and me, have sought the Lord our God. Our God. Again, when Ace is speaking, he's speaking about, it's not your God. He's my God also. So he claims God for his own. We have sought him, and he has given us rest on every side. Now look, if there's one thing we rest, peace. Solomon meant peace. Jerusalem, city of peace. Jesus Christ will bring a thousand years of peace. In here is somewhere about the Lord Jesus Christ in the millennium. With all this peace. And they'll be built in the millennium, the cities. For he's given us rest on every side. There'll be no enemies of Israel in the millennium. That's after the thousand years when devil's loose. Then he gets up an army and God's like, you're dead, you're gone. Go to the lake of fire. So they built and prospered. The Jews are going to prosper under Jesus Christ, seated upon David's throne in the millennium in their land. They're going to have their vineyards. They're going to have their wheat. They're going to have their barley. They're going to have their grapes. They're going to have their olive. They're going to have their, their animals. They're going to have this, the, the temple. They're just going to have all kinds of joy and peace and greatness all before God. And the land has no curse except the snake. You're going to have a lion with a lamb laying together. Uh, and the Bible says a child can put his hand inside a hole of a snake and it's not going to bite him. Just that snake is still going to crawl on the ground. You can pick for your sweetheart roses and they won't have thorns. There will be no weeds in your garden. Can you imagine that? All the waters will be sweet to taste. No poison berries, no poison ivy. So the Jews are going to prosper. And Asa had an army of men that, that bare targets, military, and spears, military, out of Judah, 300,000, out of Benjamin, that bare shields and drew bows, 204 score thousand. All these were mighty men of valor. That's, this is military. And there came out against them Zira. Zira. The Ethiopian. Ooh. Pay attention to the Ethiopians in the Bible. With a host of a thousand, thousand, and three hundred chariots and came unto Mar Marasha. This is the largest recorded army in the, Old, in the Old Testament in the Bible. It's even a non number, a thousand, thousand. And Asa went out against him. Oh, he's an enemy, here he comes. I gotta go defend ourselves. And they set the battle in array in the valley of Zephah at Marisha. I'm pronouncing his name wrong. And Asa cried unto the Lord, he is God. God, the enemy's out there. Uh, God, they got a lot of men out there. God, help. God, you're the only help. I've been there. You fought against armies? Nope. God, I'm in a situation I can't do nothing. I, only you can do it. Been through it many times. Only you, God. I need help. 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 And, and said, Lord, it is nothing with thee to help. God, you don't, even, you don't even have to lift your pinky. You're not going to break a sweat. The God that said, let there be light, there it is. He's got an angel that can wipe out a whole military force in one night. God, what, I think it's even God said, is there anything too hard for the Lord? Imagine God making that bold statement about, is there anything too hard for me? And they come up with these stupid questions. Can God make a rock so much he can't move it? Yeah, your heart. But then again, he can he can deal with your heart and break that heart by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love and the mercy and the long suffering. So there is no rock that he can't break. 
Lord, help. Whether with many, you can use a lot, or with them that have no power. You, Lord, you can use a vast army. Jesus said, I can call legions of angels. That's a lot. I forget how many, but he could, that's a lot. But how many of Jesus conquered death and hell in Satan? One man and one cross and one burial tomb and three days and three nights. And we now, by the power and the blood and the gospel of Lord Jesus Christ, those that do believe, we have the power over death, we have power over hell, and we have the power of living forever, getting a brand new body, going to New Jerusalem, and forever to be with the God that created us. One man. A name above all names. There is no other name given amongst men whereby you must be saved. That's Jesus. No other. Glory to God. Help us. <laughs> there's, no, there's no shame in saying, God, help. I've done it. Oh, Lord, our God. For we rest on thee. Look at that word rest keeps showing up. One word rest means we got peace, sit back, you know, just doing what we need to do. No troubles. And then the other rest is we're leaning against you, God. You're holding us up. And I don't mean holding us up in traffic delay. You are, we're standing because of you, Lord. We are dependent on you for support. Rest. In thy name. Again, Acts 4.20. There is no other name given amongst men whereby you must be saved. The name of God, Jehovah, Jesus Christ. We go against this multitude. See that army over there, God? Help! We're going to challenge them in your name. Ready? Well, we're not going to join the army because the Bible says, Thou shalt not kill. And Asa is completely under the Ten, Ten Commandments. Asa is under, Thou shalt not kill. And he's going to say, God, we're going to go kill in your name. What do you do with that? And God's going to give him the victory. Evidently, you got a false religion. You have not interpreted the Bible correctly. And you're going to stand ashamed before God at the great white throne judgment. The leaders of, those, of that organization. They have misinterpreted and they don't know what the Bible says. They don't know how to rightly divide. They don't know how to rightly divide a nation protecting its people and a man taking a gun, knife, or whatever and killing another man. They can't rightly divide. So we're going to go in thy name. Against the multitude. They got more than us, but we have God. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Lord, help us. We're going in the name. Oh, Lord. <laughs> like, little fear. Thou art our God. Let not man prevail against us. In the end, let those Ethiopians be the loser and not you, Lord. Don't let the Ethiopian gods win. You win. That's what he's saying. So, so the Lord smote the Ethiopians before Asa and before Judah, and the Ethiopians fled. And Asa and the people that were with him pursued them unto Gerah. Genesis 20, verse 2, and Genesis 26, verse 6. That's the place where Abraham said, Hi, she's my sister. 26 verse 6, Isaac, hi, she's my sister. They are in the Philistine area. You know what the Ethiopians are doing? They're running home. They were in Judah. Look at a map. Look where Philistine. They're, they're, they're going like, uh, listen, I'm looking southwest. They're going southwest. They're heading their way back to Africa. And Asa is at Gerar, which is close to the Philistine area, and he's kicking butt. And the Ethiopians were overthrown. I mean, the thousands of thousands. And they could not recover themselves. You know what recovery means? 
You know, hospital, you had surgery, you're in the recovery room. You are getting over your surgery. Your body's getting back to normal where it should be from before the surgery. They are not making up. They are no they are not improving. They're not strengthening themselves. For they were destroyed before the Lord and before his host, Judah and Benjamin. And they carried away very much spoil. That's Judah and Benjamin. They're taking all the spoil to Ethiopian. And they smoke all the cities round about Gerar. That would be also the Philistines. For the fear of the Lord came upon them, and they spoiled their city. For there was exceedingly much spoil in them. You know how Abraham got his spoil in this place we're reading about right now? Hi, she's my sister. And Abimelech gave him silver, gave him gold, gave him sheep, gave him horse, whatever, everything. Abraham got rich off by saying, that's my, that's my uh, sister. You know how Isaac got rich? He's down there. She's my sister. And Abimelech's looking out the window one day saying, No, you are not brother and sister, my friend. You're sporting. And he gave Isaac money and goods. You know. And then he gave some money to Rebecca saying, You know, you better cover your face up. And this is to reprove you that you lied. The riches that this Jewish people get in Gerar is interesting. Now they're getting the riches by war. Thou shalt not kill. They carry away very much spoil. And they smoked all the cities round about Gerar, and the fear of the Lord came upon them. And they spoiled the city, for there was exceedingly much spoil in them. They smoked also the tents of cattle, cowboys. You know, men that had cattle, they, they lived in tents, they would travel. They would be nomadic. Cows would eat all the grass in that area. You had to move on. And they carried away sheep and camels in abundance. And then they returned to Jerusalem. So again, you're seeing Abraham again. You're seeing Isaac all over again. If you rightly divide the scriptures. And then they go back home. We got joy, joy. Man, our God is great. Look what he's given us. Look how great he is. Look how wonderful he is. And then they run to a couple of Jehovah Witnesses. Oh, we couldn't fight you because we're not supposed to kill. Man, we had a slaughter. And look what God's rewarded us. Sheep, camels, cattle, gold, outfits, tents. When it says those tents, they would also take the tents and the food and everything. And what do you think Asa did with all the gods? He burned them, got rid of them. Glory to God. 